I was offered a position as Associate Professor of Medicine and Chief of Scientific Visualization at uh, Yale University uh, in the Department of Medicine. And my job was to write uh, many of the algorithms and code for NASA to do virtual surgery in preparation for the astronauts going into deep space flight so they could be cut in robotic pods. One of the fascinating things about what we were actually working on is that we were seeing, using the new kind of scanning technologies, things that had just had never been seen before. I mean, not only in disease management, but also things that allowed us to see things about the body that just made you marvel. Uh, I remember one of the first times we were looking at collagen and your entire body, everything, your hair, skin, bone, nails, everything is made of collagen. And it's a kind of a rope-like structure that twirls and swirls like this. And the only place that collagen changes its, its structure is in the corner of your eye. In your eye, it becomes a grid formation and therefore it becomes transparent as opposed to opaque. So perfectly organized a structure, it was hard not to attribute divinity to it because we kept on seeing this over and over and over again in different parts of the body. One of the opportunities I had was um, uh, one person was working on a really interesting kind of micromagnetic resonance imaging machine with the NIH and what we were going to do is scan uh, a new project on the development of the fetus from conception to birth using these kinds of new technologies. So I wrote uh, the algorithms and code and he was building, he built the hardware. Paul Lauterbro uh, then went on to win the Nobel Prize for inventing the MRI. I get the data. And uh, I'm going to show you a sample of that piece from conception to birth.
But as you can see, when you actually start working on this data, it's pretty spectacular. And as we kept on scanning more and more, you know, uh, working on this project, looking at these two simple cells that had this kind of unbelievable machinery that will become the magic of you. And as we kept on working on this data, looking at small clusters of the body, these little, you know, pieces of tissue that were the trophoblast coming off of the blastocyst, all of a sudden burrowing itself into the side of the uterus, saying, you know, I'm here to stay, all of a sudden having a conversation of communications of the estrogens, the progesterons, saying, you know, I'm here to stay, plant me, building this incredible trilinear fetus that becomes within 44 days something that you can recognize, and then at nine weeks is really like a kind of a little human being. The marvel of this information, how do we actually have this biological mechanism inside our body to actually see this information. I'm going to show you something pretty unique. Here's a human heart at 25. It's just basically two strands. And like this magnificent origami, cells are developing at, you know, one million cells per second at four weeks as it's just folding on itself. Within five weeks, you can start to see the early atrium and the early ventricles. Six weeks, these folds are now beginning with the papilla and the inside of the heart actually being able to pull down each one of those valves in your heart until you get actually a mature heart and then basically the development of the entire human body. The magic of the mechanisms inside each genetic structure saying exactly where that nerve cell should go. The complexity of these, the mathematical models on how these things are indeed done are beyond human comprehension. Even though I am a mathematician, I look at this with a marvel of how do these instruction sets not make these mistakes as they build what is us. It's a mystery, it's magic, it's divinity. I mean, then when you start to take a look at an adult life, take a look at this little tuft of capillaries. It's just a tiny sub-substructure, microscopic, but basically by the time you're at nine, you know, nine months and you've given birth, you have almost 60,000 miles of vessels inside your body. I mean, and only one mile is visible, 59,999 miles that are basically bringing nutrients and taking waste away. The complexity of building that within a single system is again beyond any comprehension of any existing mathematics today. And then instruction set from the brain to every other part of the body. Look at the complexity of the folding. Where is this intelligence of knowing that a fold can actually hold more information? So as you actually watch the baby's brain grow, and this is one of the things that we're doing right now, we're actually doing a longitudinal studies of actually scanning a baby's brains from the moment they're born every six months until they're six years old. We're gonna be doing actually about 250 children, watching exactly how the jirai and the sukai of the brains fold to see how this magnificent develop actually turns into memories and the marvel that is us, the magic that is existence that is us. Thank you. The statements we're about to show you are from the Holy Qur'an and is said to be the official, unchanged, pure word of God revealed over 1400 years ago. Claiming to be the word of God is a heavy statement and without proof or if a single contradiction is found within the book, the apparent word of God will be proven false. So without further ado, let's put the book to the test. In the 23rd chapter, titled The Believers, from the 12th to the 14th verses, God is said to give a detailed description of how the human being is formed. It begins by saying, We then placed him as a sperm drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into a alaqa. We will translate this word very soon. And then we changed the alaqa into a lump. Then we made out of that lump into bones and then we clothed the bones with flesh then we caused him to grow and come into being and attain the definitive human form in the 21st century we can now safely say that this verse is clearly describing the process of human development in correct chronological order however what we should be paying attention to in particular is the second stage referring to the development of the embryo the specific word used to describe the embryo in this verse is the word alaqa. The word alaqa, when translated into English, can mean three separate things. Firstly, a blood clot or to be suspended, that is to be hanging or clinging to something. Or thirdly and finally, a leech. Now all three definitions don't come anywhere near what we perceive to be the human embryo. so. 
why these words used and what significance do they share with the human embryo? Can the embryo be described as a blood clot? Well, what do you think? In the third week of embryonic development, a tubular heart joins with the blood vessels to form a primordial cardiovascular system. And by the end of the third week, the blood is circulating and the heart begins to beat on day 21. The first thing that comes to mind in regards to being suspended or hanging is the umbilical cord. But we can't use that example because we are simply referring to step 2, before the baby has even formed. But we now know today that the umbilical cord is formed from the connecting stalk. And the connecting stalk is formed as soon as the embryo is formed. The embryo's connecting stalk has even been described by John Allen and Beverly Kramer as an object to suspend the developing embryo in the extra embryonic column. So an embryo is suspended and does have a strong resemblance with the blood clot. What on earth would an embryo have to do with a leech? Figure A shows the structure of an embryo at 25 days. Figure B shows a leech. Now please note once again that the embryo in this stage is no greater than the size of a kernel of wheat. This is an x-ray of the embryo at 22 days. This is the internal structure of a leech. It's mind-blowing stuff, but you still haven't seen anything yet. This is the head of the embryo at 22 days. The detail you are seeing right now is absolutely impossible to be seen with the human eye and can only be seen with a microscope. This is the back end of a leech. There's no other words used to describe this other than mind-blowing. The pictures we have shown you are impossible to be seen with the human eye or even to be predicted by the human mind. Once again, the verses we have shown you were revealed over 1400 years ago to a man who couldn't read nor write. Are these the words of God? Descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God, from God, from God, from God.